Hello and welcome to one and all. In this class, we will check out the two marks answers of unit 3, national income, poverty and unemployment. Okay. So as usual, I have mentioned the uh, number of the years in which those particular questions have appeared previously in the board exam. Okay. So the first one is the national income. So this question has appeared in March to 2022 and 2016. So twice this question has been asked in the board exam. So what is the meaning of national income? National income refers to the volume of goods and services turned out during a given period, usually a year. That is the total volume of goods and services produced in a country in a given year. The trends or changes in the national income reflects the progress or otherwise of a country. So if the national income changes in such a way that it is rising it indicates the progress of a country if it is decreasing or otherwise that it shows that the other side of the growth of the national income of a particular country that means it is the country is not progressing it is degrading so that is the meaning of the second sentence the trends or changes in the national income reflects the progress or otherwise of a country so year after year if you check the growth rate in national income how much percentage it has grown or how much percentage it has decreased or if it is remaining uh, stagnant so that shows the status of a particular country okay next question is the per capita income you can see that several times this question has been asked march 2022 2020 2018 2017 2016 and 2014 Per capita income refers to the average income of the citizen of a country. Please don't forget to mention the word average. Average income of the citizen of a country. That is per capita income is equal to this is a formula. National income divided by total population. What is the importance of per capita income? The growth of per capita income at constant prices. That is taking a base year and calculating the uh, per capita income based on that base year prices it is an indicator of the change in the standard of living of the people so that means what if there is a rise in the per capita income it indicates the standard of living of the people of the country has increased so that is the main uh, importance of knowing the per capita income third one is the unemployment which has been asked in uh, question paper march 2018 unemployment is a situation when a person does not obtain employment opportunity despite its willingness to work on existing wage rates. So whatever the level of wage rates that are offered to the person is not is willing to work but still is not finding the job. That is the meaning of unemployment or in other words put it simply it is involuntary unemployment. According to Lord Keynes unemployment in developed nations occurs due to deficiency in effective demand. This you must have studied in the first year that because of the lack of aggregate demand or effective demand, unemployment occurs in the developed nations. But in developing countries like India, it occurs due to several reasons like overpopulation, lack of education and skill, etc. So there are several reasons for unemployment to be happening in developing countries including India. Next question is chronic underemployment. Uh, the chronic means permanent underemployment means not utilizing the time of the labor properly for example if a person is working for a uh, normal so working level is that it is can standard person year basis that means why a person has to work for eight hours a day for 273 days a year if a person is working like that he is said to be fully employed if he is not working for uh, 8 hours a day or if he is not working for 273 days a year, that means a person is not fully employed, he is underemployed. That is the meaning of underemployment. So chronic underemployment means permanently a person is underemployed. So that is what the meaning it is. If a person is working lesser than standard person year basis, that is lesser than 8 hours a day for 273 days a year, is said to be underemployed measured on usual principal status basis this is one of the concepts of the measurements of unemployment if a person or persons are underemployed for a major part of the year then they are said to be chronically underemployed for a major part of year it is almost like permanent that's why it is chronic the next one is the 
weekly status unemployment this is also one of the concepts of unemployment uh, based on the survey week to what extent a person is employed or unemployed is found out in the weekly status unemployment measured in number of persons that is persons who could not find even an hour of work during the survey week so during the survey week they when they are checking the uh, when the statistical data is to be taken during that survey week if a person is found to be unemployed even for one hour in that survey week then he is considered to be unemployed survey week indicates weekly status unemployment it is one of the concepts of unemployment next one is the structural unemployment structural unemployment occurs when a country is unable to create enough jobs for all those willing and able to work this is due to inadequacy of productive capacity as a result of deficiency of capital the demand for labor falls short of supply of labor india is facing structural unemployment now what is happening most of the underdeveloped country they are all developing now so on the one hand the population is rising and people are come at least the basic education is being completed by most of the people but unfortunately the industries they are not able to offer in any area for that matter they are not able to offer them jobs because of lack of productive capacity they don't have that much capacity to create enough jobs for all those who are seeking jobs so that is again because they don't have that much amount of capital lack of capital or the deficiency of capital leads to lesser demand for labor than the supply of labor which is increasing because of the overpopulation so this is structural unemployment basically this is based on the economic structure of a particular country and india is facing this type of unemployment next one is the seasonal unemployment seasonal unemployment occurs due to changes in demand based on seasonal variations so the laborers they get jobs only certain seasons in a year certain time in a year the remaining part of the year they remain unemployed agriculture is the best example for example in agricultural sector laborers are employed only during the peak season for around 7 to 8 months so up to harvesting period they will have the job and after that they will remain unemployed this re the, the remaining part of the year they remain unemployed next one is the open unemployment open unemployment is a situation when the laborers don't find any work for a major part of the year see if a person is uh, very difficult for an individual to find no jobs for a major part of the year okay so that's why it is open it will be very very obvious that's why it is called as an open unemployment so who are all the people who fall under this category unemployment of educated and skilled labor and also the migrated rural labor to urban area in search of jobs fall under this category and why we are saying unemployment of educated and skilled labor fall under the category of open unemployment because if the person is not educated and if a person is not skilled he would undertake any kind of employment no any casual employment also he will take so he won't remain unemployed for a major part of the year only the educated and the skilled people they won't take any type of job so they have certain specifications isn't it so if they are not finding according to their requirements they remain unemployed and if they remain unemployed if they don't find according to their needs uh, job opportunities for a major part of the year it will be very very obvious it is very open so that's why educated and skilled labor and also people migrating from rural area to urban area so they all fall under the category of open unemployment next one is the educated unemployment same thing when a person fails to obtain a job in spite of being educated trained and skilled fall falls under the category of educated unemployment presently this type of unemployment has become a problem for all developing economies particularly in india because india is growing rapidly so education attainment is being increasing continuously in our country most of the people are uh, completing their education the, there is a tremendous increase in the educational attainment of the people in our country but unfortunately they are not able to find the that much level of jobs in the country so that's why the structural unemployment is also happening in our 
country industries are not developing that much to provide job op job opportunities to all the people who are passing out of the universities and schools and colleges not schools colleges and universities next one is the cyclical unemployment cyclical unemployment in the name itself is a cycle up and down cyclical unemployment is due to ups and downs in business so what happens in uh, this called as some business cycles what happens in the business cycles it uh, the business goes up there will be employment when the business comes down automatically there will be certain amount of unemployment this type of unemployment is found in developed countries because most of the developed countries they are all capitalistic countries and uh, capitalistic countries in this the government intervention is minimum so because they solely depend upon the price mechanism which moves up and down so that's why the business cycles are very very common in all the developed countries so where during the slack season the laborers remain unemployed the next one is the disguised unemployment opposite to open unemployment is the disguised unemployment disguised means something hidden it is not open when more people are employed than actually necessary then it is known as disguised unemployment it is normally found in agricultural sector in underdeveloped countries the extra labor force do not contribute anything to production as their marginal productivity is zero see for example if you take in a piece of land in a piece of farm if only four labor laborers are sufficient to complete the work but if uh, eight laborers are employed in the same piece of land you do not know out of the eight laborers which four laborers are actually employed and which four laborers are not actually employed that is disguised they are hidden so even if there these four extra laborers are removed from that piece of farm the productivity is not going to be affected why because the all the extra labor force the extra four laborers they are not contributing anything to the production as their marginal productivity is equal to zero so there what is marginal productivity the addition made by the addition to total production made by additional labor force so this is mostly found in the underdeveloped countries because most of the underdeveloped countries they are all agricultural oriented countries isn't it the next question is the frictional unemployment so the frictional unemployment it is a temporary unemployment which exists during the period of transfer of labor from one occupation to another is called frictional unemployment it is not necessary a laborer works in the same place the same company continuously for a long period of time there will always people will always uh, seek um, better opportunities isn't it so people want to move from one occupation to another occupation move from one place to another place move from one company to another company move from one sector to another sector so when there that transit is happening during that period of time there will be a certain amount of unemployment isn't it so that transition period is called as a frictional unemployment and it is only a temporary till they find the jobs it arises due to imperfections of labor market which is a reflection of ignorance about job opportunities so imperfections of labor market if the labor market is perfect if there is a perfect labor market then Uh, the laborers would exactly know where they can find the jobs the employers will also know from which part of the country which part of the world they can get their uh, the sufficient amount of staff members but then uh, the world is not having the perfect market we are all having only the practically it is only the imperfect market so because of the imperfections the laborers are not aware of where according to their requirements where they can get the job so till they find out that they remain unemployed that's the ignorance about job opportunity they are not aware of the job opportunities available elsewhere in the country or elsewhere in the world next one is the non employment the people who are working in their household activities or unorganized sector so there are two kinds of sector isn't it organized and unorganized sector so the people who are employed in the unorganized sector the household activities also they come under the unorganized sector in developing countries because in developing countries this segment of unorganized sector is more than the segment of organized sector are treated as non employment category persons the next one is the underemployment as i mentioned this previously 
if a chronically under underemployed so the same thing if a person is not working for 8 hours a day 273 days a year if a person is working for 8 hours a day 273 days a year it is considered that person is fully employed then it indicates under employment even though some of the workers are employed they are under utilized as either they do not have work throughout the year or their labor time is not fully utilized so either they do not have work throughout the year so out of so we are taking 273 days a year not uh, 365 days okay so out of this 273 days they are not uh, i mean they are not having work even uh, half the percentage of this 273 days a year they are not working or instead of eight hours a day they are working only for two hours or three hours a day that means for their their labor time is underutilized so that is the meaning of uh, under employment so throughout the year or their labor time is not fully utilized next one is the technological unemployment when the introduction of new technology causes displacement of workers it is called technological unemployment so instead of uh, earlier whatever the process of work that has been done manually now suddenly because of the new invention that would be replaced or it would be done mechanically so the, when the machines replace the uh, labor force there will that is the introduction of new technology isn't it so during that period of time the laborers would find certain amount of unemployment this is a situation when people lose their jobs due to advancement in technology okay now all these types of unemployment even though they have not been asked previously in the board exam all these types of unemployment is very very important for your five marks question so you are you will get one question types of unemployment in the five marks section so all these types of unemployment are very very important for five marks question okay so try to remember understand the concept and try try to memorize this answer the next one is the poverty line which has been asked in march 2020 board exam poverty line is the midpoint of monthly per capita expenditure to be incurred in order to consume certain minimum calories as per the indian council of medical research this minimum calorie intake is 2400 per person per day in rural areas and 2100 calories in urban areas so if a person has to if a person in rural area has to consume 2400 calories per, per day he has to spend certain amount of money income and in, in the same way a person in urban area if he has to consume he or she has to consume 2100 calories per day then he has to spend certain amount of money so convert it into based on this how much a person in rural area has to spend monthly same way how much a person in the urban area has to spend monthly so take the midpoint of that so if that if the person is uh, not spending that much so that is the midpoint we are taking to know the average so if a person in rural area is not able to spend that much then yeah they are considered to be below the poverty line so what is if a person is spending that much so that in such a way that a person in rural area is able to consume 2400 calories per day a person is able to consume 2100 calories per day in urban areas they are on the poverty line okay that's why so that is a minimum basic calorie intake they, they should take so that's why it is called as a poverty line if a person is spending lesser than that that person is considered to be below the poverty line if a person is spending more than that in such a way he is able to consume more than the 2400 or 2100 calories then that person is considered to be above the poverty line so we cannot calculate how much we cannot find out how how much calories each and every person is consuming isn't it so on what basis it is being calculated it is being calculated on in order to consume 2400 calories how much money expenditure a person in rural area has to spend whether that person is spending that much amount of money income or not so if he is spending that much amount of money income then he is above the poverty line if he is not spending is not able to spend then he is he or she is below the poverty line okay so this is this 2400 and 2100 calories minimum calorie intake is as per the indian council of medical research the next one is the poverty gap so we now we know what is the poverty line 2400 and 2100 calories so how much percentage of the population they are able to 
consume and how much amount of pop a percentage of population they are not able to consume. so um, what is the gap some person might be able to consume 2400 calories some people might be consuming more than 2400 but some people might be consuming 2000 calories some other section of the population they might be able to consume only uh, 1500 calories so there is a gap so 1500 to 2400 2000 to 2400 so the, you can see the gap isn't it so that is what uh, uh, found out in the poverty gap so how it is calculated poverty gap is equal to poverty line minus average consumption expenditure of the poor divided by poverty line okay and or it is uh, mentioned in the formula g is equal to z minus y divided by z see that line that's a typing mistake sorry so poverty gap reflects the depth of poverty as well as its incidence so how poor a person is known by poverty gap incidence how much percentage of the population is poor in this particular state how much percentage of the population is extremely poor in this particular country that is what is called as incidence so all this can be known by knowing the poverty gap the next one is the absolute poverty which has been asked in board exam paper march 2017 if a person's income or consumption expenditure is so low that he lives below the subsistence level subsistence level is what is the minimum consumption a person has to have in order to maintain his subsistence level of consumption normal living so that is unable to purchase or consume minimum physical quantities of cereals pulses milk butter etc is said to be absolutely poor so earlier i mentioned to you about 2400 and 2100 calories so beginning the 1970s and all uh, based on the poverty calculations the planning commission were using was using only this 2400 and 2100 calories as the minimum subsistence level of consumption now it is slightly improved instead of just mentioning 2400 and 2100 calories it is mentioned in such a way that what should be the there should be a balanced diet so what should be the minimum physical quantities of cereals pulses milk butter etc so all these together constitute the subsistence level of consumption and if a person is not able to spend that much amount of money income to consume this minimum levels of cereals pulses milk etc then is said to be absolutely poor so that is what is known as absolute poverty and this kind of poverty is found in underdeveloped countries including india the next one is the relative poverty the people with lower income are relatively poor compared with higher in incomes even though they may be living above the minimum level of subsistence is relative poverty this kind of poverty is found in developed countries so in developed countries people might be able to consume have their minimum level of subsist uh, consumption level subsistence level of consumption they might be able to consume that much amount of uh, uh, nutritional diet but compared to the other person this uh, the, this person's consumption may be poor so how it is calculated so calculate uh, is calculated based on the top the richest section of the population the top 20 25 percent of the population what is their consumption expenditure compared to the next uh, section of the uh, the uh, next below top uh, section of the population slightly poorer sections of the population what is their consumption level so compared to top richest person slightly richer person consumption level be, will be lesser isn't it even though he is above the absolute poverty level but compared to other person this person consumption level is lesser so relatively this person is poor poorer compared to the other person that's why it is a relative poverty which is mostly found in the developed countries please remember absolute poverty is found in developing countries and relative poverty is found in developed countries and finally multi-dimensional poverty index which is uh, the same thing which we had in the first chapter i'm giving the same answer here multi-dimensional poverty index was introduced in 2010 it illustrates the deprivations on multiple basic needs faced by the poor households at the same time such as nutrition child mortality access to drinking water sanitation etc so if the uh, majority of the percentage of the people they are deprived of 
of all these things access to drinking water access to a proper nutritional diet access to education sanitation etc at the same time they are considered to be multidimensionally poor okay so these are all the questions uh, two marks questions under unit 3 national income poverty and unemployment so if you find this video useful please like share and also subscribe to my youtube channel if you have any doubts or suggestions please don't fail to mention in the comment box okay so until my next class take care bye bye